He's getting older. Pay that man his money! Oh, hit the ball button! But not wiser. Come with me if you want to live! This is The Lefty Show. Welcome, everybody, to The Lefty Show. I am your host, Lefty. Glad to be here with all of you today for episode number 61 of The Lefty Show. Rolling through these motherfuckers. It's uh, episode number 61 of The Lefty Show. Welcome one, welcome all. Today, Tuesday, the 22nd of July, in the year of our Spaghetti Monster 2014. No show on Monday because there was a show on Sunday, and I just wanted to take a day for myself after uh, after exercising the demons and getting uh getting clearing the air with regards to uh departure from uh painkiller already had to deal with some some lies and damned lies what was that quote from mark twain there's lies and and then there's damned lies or st- there's lies damned lies and statistics i believe it was these were more of some damned lies that were going being thrown about in an attempt to win a pr war and i just had to get some of them straight a quick thing and i'm gonna be done I'll get to the propers here in a bit I'm going to be done responding to lies uh, about this whole thing. I, I said my piece, and that was it. And if other people want to continue to try to lie about what happened, well, that's that. I'm not going to respond to lies because you can go to episode number 60 of The Lefty Show to find my responses there because it would be silly to just set the precedent of all you have to do is tell some lie, and then all of a sudden I'm uh, I'm responding to it. If, there, if the lies get too much, I'll reserve the right to say something, but... You know, the liars are free to lie and try to save face or say anything they want. And I'm just not going to I'm just not going to deal with it. The only thing that I want to clear up, some people had some misconceptions. There were some further misconceptions going on about my proposals to Painkiller Already as far as compensation goes. There were two proposals, one by me, one by the powers that be at Painkiller Already. The first one was by by me was just a strict commission, no salary. No, nothing else. Just a strict commission on sales, including ad revenue and Patreon revenue. And it effectively, you, if you expressed it as a percentage of the gross, it would be 125 to 15% of gross revenue. And that's only after a percentage of reasonable expenses were taking, taken out. And I thought, it, I thought of it that way because if the thing didn't make money, well, I didn't make money. And if it did make money, I made money. And it was considerably less than the 25 or 33 percent that I had been earning previously. And I thought that was fair. I thought that was reasonable. No salary, no nothing else, no base compensation. I just said effectively 12 and a half percent of gross after reasonable ex- or 12 and a half percent of gross or 20 percent of profits or whatever it is, 25 percent of profits after reasonable expenses being taken out. And we could negotiate of what is reasonable. And that's it. That's all I wanted. That's all I that's all I bargained for. And yes, commissions are out there. I work for this, and I've done this, and I don't expect that. Well, okay, but <laughs> that doesn't mean you can't bargain for something like this, and I thought it was reasonable and, and fair. I was not giving, I was not liable, and I, was, I had a reduced role, and so I take a reduced thing. That's all. No salary, no nothing. I wasn't trying to have my cake and eat it, too. Liars out there lying about that kind of thing. Never happened. The counteroffer to that was a base salary plus... Uh, ten percent of of advertisements, and there's new somebody selling somebody new selling advertisements on the show. So basically, it was a base salary and ten percent of maybe, ten percent of maybe. We'll see, maybe, maybe not. And that's what I took. There was no combining of offers. There was no anything else. I made an offer. It was just it was strictly commission based, no salary whatsoever. That was no. Then it was base salary plus ten percent of maybe. And I said, well, that seems a little bit unreasonable. And I was told, well, we'll see how it goes for three months and we'll see what's what. I said, okay, well, that's that's fair. That's cool. If, it, if, it, if at the end of three months I'm getting screwed, okay. If at the end of three months I'm doing all right, well, then we'll continue. Very, very simple. Then only after that did I say, well, what about outstanding stuff? That's not combining. That's not being greedy. There was outstanding payments. And I asked, like, are they going to be blah, 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 blah. And we all agreed to that. There was no combining of of things. I didn't get what I wanted. What I wanted was a strict commission. I got what I bargained for because we all came to an agreement, and then one day somebody woke up and decided that that agreement wasn't good anymore and tried to change the deal, and I would not let them. Now, if that's greedy, fine. Fuck it. Glad I'm not doing business with them anymore. That's that. That's the only thing I wanted to clear up. Anyway, welcome one. Welcome all to The Lefty Show. Number 61, got a lot to talk about today. Hope to put on a good show for you today. Thank you to everybody for watching on YouTube. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX is where you can go to find the show. 
in its YouTube formation. You can also follow me on Twitter at Lefty643. Stay up to date on all the latest and greatest Lefty Show news. If you want to share the show, and thank you to everybody for sharing the show with uh, your friends, family, and coworkers, you can head on over to Podbean, uh, leftyshow.podbean.com or go to your favorite Android podcasting app of choice. Search The Lefty Show. Or if you want to help us climb the iTunes ranks, you want to help out uh, the pirate ship, the pirate frigate, maybe a galleon. I don't know which is which is bigger, a frigate or a galleon. I think a frigate, right? Or is it a galleon? I don't know. Battleship. That's what we'll do. Ironclad. If you want to help us out, go to the iTunes store. Open it up right now. There's a link in the description to the show on the iTunes store found in the uh, again in the description. Go to the iTunes store, search The Lefty Show. Help. Be sure to subscribe there. Download all the episodes at your leisure. That will help us out there. And uh, thank you to everybody that's been donating. I'm raising.com forward slash 643 productions. That's I'm raising.com forward slash 643 productions. Now I said I took a, uh, I took a personal day yesterday. Isn't every day a personal day? <laughs> I'm going to take a personal day. So to me, I just stumbled upon that because when people say I'm going to take a personal day, it's a, it implies that every any, no other day is personal. <laughs> are you not you on non-personal days when you show up to work? Are you not you? I mean, yeah, you're doing work. You might r- rather be doing other things, but you're still you. You're still a person. You did, you're still personal. You still have thoughts and things rattling around inside your brain. Or maybe you don't. But I took a day to myself, and I was, uh, I was in the mood for a nice cigar, and I was out and about um, with my girlfriend spending the day. And I came across a store. I was like, all right, so I was planning out the trip. I said, oh, we're going here, here, and the other thing. And then the, the place I, w- I like to go for cigars is, is this way. And it's a bit of a drive to go get it. I'll keep my eye out for, some, for, for another place that sells cigars. Sometimes a liquor store will do it. They don't have the greatest selection, but we'll see. So driving along, I think we were at a Best Buy. And across the street, I saw something that was like Cigar Superstore, Cigar Central, something like that. It was like a strip mall type joint. I figure, oh shit, all right, cool. This is great because I no longer have to drive all over the place to go get a cigar to just sit and chill on um, a day after some some uh, some soul searching and a lot of uh, a lot of talking and a lot of hate. Um, so I figured, okay, I'll just go there. I'll, I'll okay, sweet. I don't have to go all over the place searching high and low, near and far for a nice cigar. So I walk into this place and I immediately notice something's off because it doesn't look like any cigar shop or tobacconist I've been to. It looks like, you know, there's like drinks and lots of cigarettes and I'm I'm like, this is not a, this is not a cigar shop. And I'm looking around, I'm looking at the product as I and I spot the the humidor in the back, and what it essentially is is just it's essentially a closet, just a like a walled off closet with a door on a sliding door on it with a humidifier going in it, and everything's in disarray. the 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 humidifier is going is way too high. It's very clear that they, these people have no interest in keeping cigars well. It's just way too high. Like it's, they're almost soggy. I'm like, what the fuck is it? What the fuck is this? So I, as I'm, I pick some that aren't too bad, and I, I, I'm walking out, and I look at some of the stock, and it's like, it's like pouches of red man that were actually packed by a red man in the 1800s, like actual tobacco from the 1800s, pipes from the 1920s, and uh, pipe tobacco that was, you know, war surplus or anything like that. And I'm like, what the, f- what is this place? What is it? And then I look. And the only thing in this cigar shop, the only thing in this store that isn't in complete and utter disarray is the snack bar where they're selling, uh, they sell like little ice cream treats and sodas in those refrigerated cabinets, but also is the glass display case that shows some interesting items, items that may, you may refer to as outside of this place, because I'm sure they'd get mad at you, bongs, pipes, one hitters. All these kinds of intricate, ornate glass things very clearly used for smoking something. And it has been my experience, or at least so I'm told, (laughs) that those kinds of very trippy colored, glass-blown, handheld pipes are used for one thing and one thing only. You don't get a corncob pipe to smoke pot. 
You get a corn cob pipe to smoke tobacco. You get a trippy dippy, hippy dippy weatherman type of pipe, handheld pipe or bong or whatever it is you want to call it, because you want to smoke pot. And of course, there was the there was the obligatory in the corner of the display case sign that said for tobacco use only. And I just thought, just what, what utter fucking bullshit? Because you're a group of people. There are like three people behind the counter. One of them wearing, you remember in the 90s when those like way too long shorts, like they're midway between shorts and pants. Women have them. They're called capris, but on men, I, I what are they, manpris? And that used to be the thing in a while. And, you, you know, you were a douchebag then if you're wearing them. And you're a douchebag. You look like a douchebag now if you're wearing them. This guy had that. Usually they were cloth, vinyl, something. This guy had that, but in jeans, in denim. So he had jean short man prees. And he had the chains hanging. I said, and I looked around again. And so I took it all. And, you know, it was like Sherlock Holmes all of a sudden. I said, okay, so this place is cigar, called Cigar Central, or whatever it is. Cigar is in the is in the name of the joint, but the, the cigars, they, they only have a small section of the store devoted to cigars, and it's a complete disarray. The other tobacco products, again, in complete disagree, disarray. The snack bar's good, <laughs> surprisingly enough. The snack bar looks like it's been pretty well used, and it looks like it's used a lot. And the only other thing that is not decrepit at this point is this glass display that hang that, that has all these weird kind of of pipes, all these smoke delivery systems or superheated air particulate superheated air delivery systems which well, let's face let's face facts that's a pot this is a pot place you go this is a head shop but the man the man has gotten so bad that head shops now have to be disguised as cigar shops and well-meaning customers like myself, idiot, some may say, I walk in and expect cigars. And there's barely any cigars. And they say, well, you guys are just smelling marijuana paraphernalia, right? What the fuck? Why can't you just do that out in the open? Why has the man, why has it gotten so in your face, this pervasive need to prevent drug use? We got to prevent it, and it's got to be you got to squash it, and you can't even say that. You, you have to say, otherwise the man or cops are going to come in and start busting skulls if you don't say, for tobacco use only. Like, what the... F- what, a, what a stupid, stupid, just utterly stupid thing to say. For tobacco use only. It's like those... <laughs> it's like those gambling... There, there used to be a thing called a local pub. I don't know if you... I, we're getting older as we progress as a society and we, you know, more social engineering by way of the legislature and legislating out things that um, special interest groups have labeled as bad, smoking, alcohol, marijuana, blah, 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 although marijuana is kind of making a comeback. There used to be a thing called a local pub. You didn't have to drive to the commercial district to go to a bar. There was a local pub right across the street from residential areas. And those places used to have coin-operated like blackjack machines or coin-operated uh, Texas Hold'em machines. And they all had, like, cartoon, scantily dressed women, some of them naked, etc. And they all said, for entertainment purposes only. And that's part of the law, is that if you're going to operate those in a state where gambling is illegal, you have to put on there, for entertainment purposes only, except you still take, take fucking money from them, or you, you have a... They operate on coins, but right next to the machines that operate on coins is a bill machine, a bill taker that takes your hard currency and turns it into these little um, gold-colored coins. Hmm. What, what, what's really going on here? What is that law accomplishing? So I look at this glass ornate, this display for tobacco use only, and I'm almost offended because what if I smoke pot? What if I want to buy something and smoke pot out of it? Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck is anybody? Not even the people, the owners of this place, but who the fuck is the state of Illinois, the state of wherever, who the fuck are they to tell me what I can do with my product? I buy this thing, this pipe. It's fucking mine. Go fuck yourself. Get away from me. This is mine. I own it. 
It's mine now. I get to do with it what I please. If I want to smoke drugs out of it, that's fine. If I want to pee into it, I'm going to pee into it. That's what I'm going to do. Don't tell me, oh, for tobacco use only. Fuck that. But we, it, under the guise of, oh, you need to tell people that, we need to make sure that it's, it's not acceptable for people to smoke the marijuana, smoke the ganj, because it's bad, reefer madness, blah, 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 blah. And it's gotten to the point, the man has gotten so big and so loud about this stupid thing. It's a stupid plant. You allow, you, the man tells you to stop smoking pot and then he clocks out of his office in City Hall and goes down to the bar and has a few stiff ones before driving home. And then he goes to a bar. <laughs> he gets a few stiff, he, he goes to one bar, gets a few stiff ones, then he goes to a bar and has a couple whiskey sours. And he drives home. We, we allow alcohol in society and people get drunk and people... You get drunk. Have you ever gotten really fucking fucked up drunk? What are you like the next day? You are completely out of commission. You may go to work. It's going to be an agonizing eight hours of your life. You're going to contemplate suicide for eight hours straight. You're going to say, motherfucker, <laughs> please let me die. I just don't like this. That's what alcohol does to us. You get really rip roaring high. You're really fucked up and you just kind of sit there with a smug look on your face like, <laughs> yeah. Then you pass out and you go to sleep and you wake up and you're totally fine. It's a better high and a better come down, a better return to normal than fucking alcohol. Alcohol goes way past normal. Alcohol goes into the negative where you feel like shit. Weed, you get really high and you're pretty much, it's like you're drunk. I don't know about the studies on loss of motor function. I don't know. But I'm assuming that it's a pretty, the high of marijuana and the high of alcohol are similar. And you, you don't necessarily have the loss of motor control, but you, get, you lose reaction time and you're slow to do things just like you are with alcohol and you kind of lose, all your senses aren't firing properly. It's a similar thing. But when you wake up, when you go to sleep and your body is able to deal with what you just did to it, when you wake up, you're totally, you're fine. So the man says, no weed. Now I'm going to go start fucking pounding whiskey. Or I'm going to start pounding Miller Lite or Bud Light or whatever it is down at the local bar, lo at the local cop bar. But you fucking junkies better not be smoking pot. And it's gotten to the point where well-meaning people who just want to smoke marijuana and those well-meaning business people who just want to sell paraphernalia to those who want to smoke marijuana harmlessly have to disguise themselves as bullshit businesses just so they can sell little glass pipes. And even then they have to say for tobacco use only. Who the fuck goes in there to buy one of those pipes for, and is like, I'm really going to smoke tobacco out of this? You may think... Do you walk in and do you announce it to the people there? Because when you buy one, they know like, yeah, hey, man. You're like, no, no, get away from me, junkie. I'm just using this to smoke tobacco because I like it. And I like pretty colors and, and re weird glass-blown designs. You don't do that. You don't walk in announcing yourself, I am here to just smoke tobacco. You go in there, you go, to the, you go in there to buy one of those things. You're buying it, you're buying it to smoke pot. You want to get high. But our society is so fucking backwards and so stupid that we allow the, 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 pro, the pushing of alcohol, the advertising of alcohol on people, but a perfectly reasonable substitute for that, the one that doesn't leave you as haggard the next day, is shoved into a corner and people have to operate in the, in the margins and in the dark and in dark alleys and behind businesses and, and they have to jump through hoops where they, if they sell the paraphernalia with a wink and a nod, they can't even, they have to say, for tobacco use only. And it's just all bullshit. My point isn't that you're making people jump through hoops. My point is that we all know, everybody in society knows that those hoops are bullshit. Everybody knows. The cops know. The cops aren't, aren't walking by and like, oh, oh, never mind, those are for tobacco use only. Let's, let's roll. There's other crimes to be solved. They know where if they want to rouse some potheads, they know exactly where to go. And where is it? The place that says for tobacco use only. The potheads know where to go. It's the same exact place. For tobacco use only. 
Everybody, every even people that don't smoke pot, know you walk into a head shop and you see all these crazy designs and glass blown pipes and bongs and hitters and da 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 and grinders. They they sell fucking grinders. It's like what is the, we know what this is for. We all know what this is for. We all know. Everybody knows. Just like everybody knows that the local pub, the local bar, is making money from that for entertainment only blackjack machine. That's it. They're making money from it. It's just for the drunks to sit there and play and they get the idea of they're winning something. They're not really winning anything. Maybe a slice of pizza. Who knows? But the bar is making money from it. But we have to say, oh, it's for entertainment purposes only. You're not actually gambling. Everybody knows it's bullshit, but we all do it for what reason? What the fuck reason do we all allow this to still continue? It doesn't make any sense. In fact, we know better. We know we all know better, but we still look around at each other and know that we have to do these things for what? Because pot is supposedly bad? Because it's so apparently awful? There's a news story I'm going to cover later about a guy who's... <laughs> a fundraiser created for an ad campaign asking Governor Nixon to free Jeff Mizansky. He's on <laughs> life in prison for moving marijuana. Sam Hurd. Former wide receiver for the Chicago Bears. Was trying to move weight in Chicago. Was trying to apparently was not happy with the NFL minimum, which is hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, which mm, probably is right. If you're live, if you're rolling with other guys that are making millions and you're trying to live that lifestyle, you're not going to have a lot of money. But Sam Hurd was trying to move a lot of weight in Chicago. He didn't have guns. He wasn't shooting people. He was just trying to connect people and move drugs, lots of drugs. I believe marijuana and blow. He got caught with a ton of illicit drugs. Like a, a, a lot. He was facing life in prison. Life in prison for having a copious amount of drugs. Didn't hurt anybody. Wasn't violent. Hadn't shown a propensity for violence outside of playing NFL football. But we just we see these things and we ex- accept all of it. And... What? All because it may be bad? It may be, it, it, well, it's illegal and we all know it's bullshit. So we have to continue, but we have to continue to pretend like we're doing something about it. Like we're actually going to do something about it. We all know it's bad, but we just can, or we all know that it's bad that this, this stuff is in place and we all know it's bullshit and we know it does nothing. People are still going to find a way. If we, we, the worst part, and the worst part about all of this is that we've done it before. We've done it before. We did it 100 years ago, almost 100 years ago. America tried a little experiment where we outlawed, where we prohibited the, create, the manufacture and sale of alcohol and the consumption of alcohol. It was a blanket ban, a blanket prohibition, just like marijuana. And on the federal level, Completely, you you cannot manufacture, you cannot hold, you cannot consume alcohol. And if you were found in possession of any of those things, there was a grace period where if you had a personal amount, you could use it, and um, and nobody would be nobody would be mad at you. But after a couple of years, you were in violation of the Volstead Act, and you were a fucking federal felon. You were on trial for a federal crime for having booze. And what did that do exactly? We tried that. And what did it do? It just made the prohibition or the production of alcohol, the manufacture of alcohol, didn't stop in America. It just moved to somebody's bathtub. It just moved to a basement that was walled off with a secret compartment to go down in there. And what, what happened to the quality? It got worse. That's why we have mixers now. Because the quality was so god-awful from the guy that was running a distillery out of his fucking bathtub that people needed to mix it with syrupy soda drinks to disguise the impurities and the the awful awful bite from the imperfections in the alcohol. Ethanol, is it? 
And it was all bullshit. Everybody knew where to go. Everybody knew where the speakeasies were. Everybody. Nothing, and they were allowed to operate. We, we had a blanket prohibition. We had all these rules about how to dispose of alcohol. And, and uh, the, the guys that were able to go, the federal agents that were required to go and seek out alcohol and try to find it. We tried it all with booze, and it didn't fucking work. The same bullshit things happened. The same wink and nod that is for entertainment purposes only, for tobacco use only, the same exact things. Hey, what are you selling... These things look like they could be you. You got the metal jug here, and you got the you got the the funnels, and you've got you you know you got some propane fired thing here. It, it looks like if you combined all of it, you could be you could be distilling alcohol out of this. Well, we're just a hardware store. They are for hardware purposes only. Uh, wink and nod. And everybody said okay. And everybody knew what all of those things put together would be used for. Nobody said a word. And we all dealt with this bullshit until finally we collectively realized, oh shit, that was a dumb idea. That was really, really dumb. Because all we did was we did not stop people from drinking. We just made drinking and the sale and moving of alcohol, we made it lucrative for organized crime. We just made, we just put, we incentivized those that are in the organized crime business to find a way to, to circumvent the law to get people what they want. People want to get high. People want to gamble. People want to pay for sex. We all know what strip clubs are. We, if you want to find the hookers, where's the first place you go as a cop? You go as a plainclothes officer and you offer to get, you try to get an H.J., or BJ, you want to, you you offer to get something from one of the strippers. You're like, hey girl, here's a hundy. Jerks me in the back. And she said, you know where the strippers are, but it's all oh, it's a gentleman's club. Oh, it's a gentleman's club. Oh, it's a gentleman's club. That's all. That's all it is. No, no, it's just that's where people go to pay for sex. If they really want to go find a way to pay for sex, that's where they fucking go. But paying for sex is illegal, so all you've done is you've incentivized people to find a way to create a business to service this vice. And it results in, a, in, a, in, in shady businesses. It results in worse products for, for the people that are going to find the vice anyway, that are going to try to satisfy that vice in their head or in their lives. That's all it does. It's repeal it all. They're just... Yeah, you want to gamble, fine. Gamble, gamble, gamble all you want. You make a lot of money from it. The states can make a ton of money from it. Go ahead and gamble. Go ahead and, and run brothels. Go ahead and smoke your marijuana. Go ahead and drink. Go ahead and do all these things because we've tried it before and we have we tried it at the federal level in the best way we could. We changed the fucking Constitution. And even then it didn't work. And now it results in me getting shitty cigars because these people that just want to sell, they don't want to, they don't want to sell me cigars. They don't want to be in the cigar business. They don't want to be in the otherwise tobacco business. They want to be in the business of selling paraphernalia to people that smoke pot. And if they could, they'd be in the business of selling pot to people. And they probably are. It's just illegal. Let them do it. Don't try to fuck up their lives. Don't, this is it's so silly that we have all these bullshit just absolute bullshit things that we have to do we have to pretend that nobody's going there to or that people are actually going there to buy to, to buy pipes to use for tobacco and it's when it gets to that point don't you say enough don't you say okay all right it worked for a while this whole pretending that you know it's illegal and you shouldn't be doing this thing but it, it's very clear that people want to smoke a lot of pot. So let's just fucking let them do it. And there are people that will sell them the paraphernalia with which to do it. And it was, again, fun for a while to kind of pretend like the cat and mouse game, like, you should not be doing that. And they're like, oh, oh we're going to try. But now we've gotten to the point where it's done right out in the open, but we all just kind of have to agree to this bullshit, which we know is bullshit, that, oh, no, 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 it's it's... 
It really is for tobacco use. It's fucking not for tobacco use. Let the people get high. Let people get high. You let them get drunk. You let them get drunk as they want. I could go out right now and kill myself with alcohol. Anybody of age, legal age, listening to this could go out right now and kill yourself with alcohol. But I can't, I have to pretend that a pipe that I'm buying for pot usage is actually tobacco. Get the fuck out of here. It's gotten to ridiculous levels. Ridiculous levels in our society. And we just look at all these bullshit things and we continue to do them because why? What kind of bullshit social norms and all the, all the social norms we have? Why do we do them? Most of them are bullshit. All right, let's uh, <clears throat> let's do uh, let's do some news, shall we? I like that. I like the news. We got a lot to talk about today in the news of Lefty. Uh, as I mentioned at the in the in the first half of the show, fundraiser created for ad campaign uh, asking Governor Nixon to free Jeff Mizanski, a guy who's uh, facing or who is uh, in prison for. Life without parole for having seven pounds of marijuana. Gunshots fired at Al Jazeera Bureau in Gaza. The Malaysia Airlines uh, flight MH17, Russian media on downed airliner. The CIA did it. A 10-year-old Afghan rape victim could face honor killing. And uh, two new Me- or three New Mexico teens are charged with killing homeless men. It's the news of Lefty. Let's talk about all the news. Now, we were talking originally in the first half of the show <clears throat> about the silliness of the the war on drugs, at least when we're, when it comes to low level recreational drug usage, um, and marijuana and, and a, maybe a little bit of cocaine. Now we have this story uh, from RiverfrontTimes.com. dot com. Efforts to uh, efforts to treat to free Jeff Mizanski, Missouri's only prisoner serving life without parole for marijuana charges are coming with an online front fundraiser that seeks to raise money for a media blitz that would aim to persuade Governor Jay Nixon to grant clemency. The goal of the Indiegogo campaign is to raise $21,000, a symbolic amount to represent the 21 years that Mazansky has been imprisoned for a series of ads for print, radio, TV, online, and billboards. The radio and TV ads will feature Mazansky himself. The fundraiser was created by Aaron Malin, uh, a researcher for Show Me, for Show Me Cannabis, although this is not a project directed by the Marijuana Reform Group. Mazansky's brother, Mike Mazansky, is also assisting with the fun- fundraiser. Malin tells Daily uh, Riverfront Times that recent efforts by, the, by Show Me Cannabis to publicize Mazansky's plight and garner public support have been positive, and he wanted to grow on that. Quote, we've gotten a lot of really good traffic from the billboard on Highway 70 with Jeff on it right now, and, uh, and a lot of positive responses, Malin says. We think those have been really effective, and we'd like to see more of those across the state. With more billboards and other advertisements, Malin and Mazansky's family hope that more people will be persuaded to pressure Governor Nixon to grant clemency. We kind of agreed that this would be a good time to redouble our efforts and see if we can't create a really overwhelming atmosphere in Missouri where citizens are clearly saying that this guy should not be in prison anymore. Mazansky himself has been trying to participate in the effort to free him from prison. He recently contacted Daily RFT to put out a statement to the public asking them to write letters and make phone calls to the governor. In the statement, Mazansky says he had just learned that he has a great grandchild on the way and he'd like it to be he'd like to be part of his life. I just pray I can be there for my great grandchild. As you all know, I could not be there for my grandkids. With all of your help, that's possible. Malin says that he hopes the message will resonate with the public and the governor, but he also hopes that Nixon will see a chance to get on board with what many see as a political sea change on marijuana laws. The political reality of the state will change after the November 2014 election and hopefully provide the governor with an additional opportunity to grant clemency. He adds that with Nixon signing into law a limited medical marijuana bill that allows severe epilepsy patients the use of cannabinoid oil, it only makes sense to grant clemency to Mazansky. Here's a guy... Who once had, he had seven pounds of marijuana on him, apparently. So probably selling pot in some way, moving it. He's been in prison for 21 years. Now, I just turned 27. I just turned 27 years old. I was six years old when this guy was sentenced to life in prison without parole for a nonviolent drug crime. He's not, he's not moving meth. Shit, even meth, fuck it. Eh, no, meth, not even once. You do some crazy shit if you're on meth. 
It was a lady who was killing her children. <clears throat> but we have a... Here's a guy who just... <laughs> By the way, that wasn't a fart. That was just me moving in my chair. My, the leather squeaked a different way. I don't know if the microphone picked that up. Now everybody's going to be like, oh, he farted. No, I didn't. I didn't. I did not fart on the air. That was just a... That was just the leather squeaking. But I was six years old. This guy was sentenced to life in prison without parole for a nonviolent drug crime. This isn't, a, this isn't John Gotti. This guy wasn't ordering people to death. He wasn't, he wasn't sending out death squads. He wasn't doing anything like that. He wasn't shooting people. He wasn't shooting at cops. He wasn't murdering people. He wasn't aiming to murder people. He just had a lot of pot on him. And, and in some bullshit way, we as a society say yes. Or the people of the state of New Mexico say yes, life without parole. And the reason I say we as a society say that because anytime, anytime you are on trial for some criminal thing, right? You're, you're accused of a crime. Whether it's federal, state, doesn't matter. It is the people of the state of New Mexico or the people of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts or on the federal level, the United States of America versus you. Versus you. Let's say, let's go back to my favorite, my favorite, favorite, favorite metaphor, but my favorite scenario for you've got nothing to hide or drug laws are illegal. Drugs are illegal for a reason. So yeah, he deserves what he got. Fuck him, fuck him, fuck him, fuck him. For everybody like that, okay? Let's say, this is the best one that I've found. Let's say you are getting a job somewhere, right? Not a partnership that, you know, the partners will eventually be talking about, you know, deciding partner business behind your back and bringing non-partners in. Let's say it's like you get a job, you're just an employee, and you're moving up the ladder, and so you have a dinner party at your house. You and your wife spend a week getting ready. You select the menu, you select the music, all that stuff, and you are inviting the bigwigs at your corporation to come to your house so that you can entertain them and hope that you get on the next big account or hope that you get brought into or a chance to buy into the company to become a partner or something. Now... You work with a, your company is displaced a little bit. There's people all over. And so you learn before the thing comes out that the CFO is coming out, big wigs, real corporate big wigs are coming out. And they're going to be at your dinner party. And you are fucking ecstatic because holy shit, I'm going to get to entertain a CEO or the chief financial officer of, of my employer is coming here to party with me. And if I make a good impression on them, holy shit, this can go so many ways, it's going to be amazing. So you get really excited. They're flying in, they're in on business, and they, they're getting, everybody's going to this thing. So they're like, okay, we'll go too. And you, you get at the day of the party, right? Everybody's having a great time. Everybody, everybody's drinking, cavorting, having a blast. The food's good, the music's good. Everybody's having fun. You walk into your living room, and you see... The, big, the corporate bigwigs are doing a couple rails off your glass dining room table. It's a party. Everybody's having a great time. You were off doing whatever, refilling drinks, getting the hors d'oeuvres set out, cleaning maybe a little bit, and everybody's having a great time. And so there's a couple rails being done on your dining room table by the fucking guys at your company. These are the guys that you want. These are the guys. They're like, oh, this is, this is your ticket. And there they are doing some blow. Now, you're not going to do blow because you don't like it, and you're like, I really wish they wouldn't do that here. I really wish it wouldn't happen. But are you really going to go up to the CFO and say, hey, knock that off. This guy could make or break you, or girl could make or break you. Then there's a knock at the door. You go and open it, local PD. Oh, the music was a little too loud. Just a little bit too loud. And you say, oh, sorry, officer, you know, we're having a dinner party. I'll, uh, I'll turn it down and uh, try not to disturb the neighbors. And they say, okay. Now as you step away to close the door, they just peer inside and they see the CFO. <laughs> and they see white powdery substance left on his upper lip. Immediately they call for backup. And they just, they come in. Probable cause now. Somebody's snorting a white powdery substance. 
in their professional capacity as police officers. Holy shit, that's that's cocaine. Have you ever seen somebody do c- cocaine? Well, not really, but I've been told that da 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 da. So they just they just come right in, and now there's blow on you in your house at your party on your dining room table. What happens? Anything good? Does anything good happen? If you're lucky, you'll just get arrested for possession. But considering it's a party and it's on your table in your house, somebody's going to get arrested, probably you, for distri- owning with intent to distribute or distributing a controlled substance. And now this is a felony. This is a class one or schedule one drug. Schedule one controlled substance. Now that's a fucking felony. And now, now you are on trial. And you're going to fight it. And you may win. But the case is billed as the people of the United States of America. The United States of America versus you. That's society speaking. And anything that happens, good or bad, that happens as a result of that. Oh, by the way, you're arrested. You gotta, your assets are seized during this whole thing. The DEA gets brought in. Your bank account's frozen. Your car's taken into evidence. Everything you own becomes evidence for the United States of America versus you. Everything you own is now in lockup, and you've got you've to fight and pay money. But, oh, by the way, you wanted money, right? Well, your assets are frozen. You may be able to get a loan. You, can, you might be able to, to swing the CFO and say, hey, it was your blow, motherfucker. Give me a loan. <laughs> Let me take out a loan from you so that I can mount my defense so that I don't get fucked. That's society. Anything that happens is society speaking. Anything that happens to... In the, the, the people of the state of Missouri versus Mazansky, that's society speaking. Society spoke. We elected these people and they appointed others to, to, to do our bidding, to do our collective bidding without complete over, one-to-one oversight from us. And now those people that we have elected have, appo- have at the very least appointed others who put a man in jail for his entire life, without parole, without the possibility for parole, for a nonviolent drug crime. Society, society has spoken, and it is said, unless we, unless we do something else, our, we have allowed our society to say, yes, you should be put in jail for life for a non, nonviolent drug crime. The governor has the power, the governor of the state of Missouri, he has the power to, to, to stop this, or, but, he, but there have been how many governors in the state of Missouri in those intervening 21 years? Not one of them had said, holy shit, wait a minute. This guy, did he, did he kill anybody? No. Did he hurt anybody? No. Did he steal anybody's money? No. Did he break anything? No. Did he break anybody's shit? No. No, he didn't. All he had was this green shit. Yes, sir, seven pounds. And he's in jail for how long? Life without parole. However many governors there have, there have been, all of them know of this guy, or somebody somewhere tried to alert them to this guy's existence, and they all just said, no, 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 uh-uh. Society has said every time that there's been a different gun- governor elected, in the state of Missouri, who did not immediately grant clemency to this guy. Society has spoken over and over again to say, yeah, this is good. We like this. So that's where we are. Society has said, this is good. This is acceptable. We need to start electing people who will actually do shit about this. Not just, oh, decriminalization. Oh, this or that. Because we are one of the most recidivist societies in existence. I think the most. We put ourselves, we legislate ourselves the most. We put ourselves in jail the most. And we are the most likely to go back to jail. The, that, out of everybody. 
on this whole little spaceship Earth. We're the most likely to do that. One of the big reasons why, and one of the big reasons why all of a sudden, imagine if you go to you go to prison for a couple of years because you had a you had a you liked really you really like smoking pot and you did it a few times. You got busted, and so now you got to serve a year in prison. What does prison do to you? Just from a sheer statistical standpoint, how likely are you, after serving time in prison, federal, state, doesn't matter, how more likely are you to commit a crime or go to, to a life of crime after that? Because once you get out of prison after a while, your life is fucked. Especially if it's on a federal bid. You get out eight years for coke. Good luck getting a job. Good luck doing anything. It seems as though crime, stealing, running numbers, girls, whatever, running drugs, seems a lot more acceptable because, well, fuck it. It's either a greeter at Walmart, maybe more likely just working in a diner somewhere for 12 hours a day at five bucks an hour, or I could run some drugs and make a little money and I'll get caught again, but fuck it. Going back to jail doesn't mean anything anymore because my life is already forfeit. It's like we wonder why we create ter- we wonder why people join the Taliban. When some pimply faced 19 year old airman controlling some from California in a trailer controlling a drone drops a missile on a family at a wedding and the there's the father survived and he saw he saw his wife and children vaporized or the woman saw the, his her husband in children vaporized or the child saw his parents or her parents vaporized the next day the fucking next day you're climbing that mountain to go seek out the taliban the very fucking next day because fuck it why not because i know the u.s did this or i know the allies or whatever the fuck i know i know these people did this i want retribution my life's already over my parents are dead my wife and children are dead my husband and children are dead 75% of my family murdered in an instant. I'm fucking, I'm doing something. Even if I'm just doing their accounting. Or if they want me to strap a bomb to my chest. That's what I'm going to do. And we wonder why this happens. How can people join the Taliban? Well, what the fuck do you think we're doing? What the fuck do you think putting people in jail for just smoking a plant? What do you think that's going to do? A big reason why we're so recidivist is because we're putting how many, what percentage, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, I can do the research, but, well, sometimes it's just, sometimes you get on a roll and you start saying things, so I don't know, but I'm guessing that there is a statistically significant percentage of the prison population in the United States that are there for nonviolent drug crimes. In fucking prison. Not jail. They're not, they're not waiting to see a judge. Not, they're not doing time in the county jail. I'm talking how many people in the prison system in the United States, at the federal and state level, are there for nonviolent drug crimes. Just possession, sale, intent to distribute, all that stuff. How many? 20%? Imagine. Imagine if, because the prisons are overpopulated and we're spending so much on them because we, we're, they're overpopulated. we got to feed and house them all. They're so... Da, 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 da. What if you said, oh, okay, well, yeah, yeah, you run a prison, right? What if I told you tomorrow... I could reduce the prison population by 20%. And I know that's a that's hopefully a bullshit and it's astoundingly low number, but you go, here, here. We're we're paying too much for these prisons, right? Yeah, oh my god, they're so expensive and the electricity and the food and the guards and the oh my god and the insurance and oh Jesus, it's fucking awful. And they're overpopulated and the the maintenance on it because we're overpopulated and there's more violence and it's just, it's awful. It's an awful thing. What if I told you an overpopulation is probably a big deal, right? Yeah, yeah, man, it's fucking awful. And, and also, we're probably, statistically speaking, making more criminals by putting people in jail. If you're a non-criminal, but you get put in prison, you probably become X percent more likely to commit another crime because... Your life is already seriously fucked. Yeah, oh my God, it's awful. It's, a, it's like a cascading effect for society. Okay, let's reduce it by 20% tomorrow. If you reduce anything bad by 20% tomorrow, you fucking won. 
And we can do that by simply saying we are no longer putting people in fucking prison for nonviolent drug crimes. And that's it. It should be legal. But for this, I'll just take decriminalization. Fuck it. But even then, decriminalization, if you can't pay the fine, what? Prison. So decriminalization isn't even enough because there are going to be people who are smoking pot to get away from things and they can't pay because I'm smoking pot because my life is fucking awful because if I got a $250 fine, I couldn't pay it. You're going to put those people in prison too. So just, just legalize it. We are, we are shooting ourselves in the foot as a society many, 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 in many different ways. By making marijuana and the like illegal, wholly illegal, we're incentivizing organized crime. Those drug cartels in Mexico, we're, we're, we kind of have a hand in that. In the 80s in Pablo Escobar. That was us, pretty much. Now we're doing it again with the Mexican drug cartels and moving marijuana. And also, because we've, we've attached such a stigma to marijuana consumption and possession, well, now we're putting a lot of our people, in our own citizens in prison. Nonviolent citizens in prison. And then they're going to go to prison again because they're going to get out and think, God, that was fucking awful. I need to smoke a joint. And then guess what? They go to their parole hearing or meet their parole officer, surprise drug test, and they're back in fucking prison. And we've created a recidivist society where everybody's done a bid. So many more people have done a bid for bullshit. It's just we're all fucked. Speaking of, and speaking of the, the United States being fucked, this is, uh, this is an awful story uh, coming from CNN. Three teens admitted to police. <clears throat> three teens admitted to police that they attacked two homeless men uh, who were found dead in Albuquerque, New Mexico on Saturday, police said. The boys, 15, 16, and 18, used bricks and a metal pole to kill the men, according to a criminal complaint accusing each of them of two counts of murder. A judge set bond at $5 million each during a hearing Monday. All three are being prosecuted as adults, although the two youngest are being held in a youth detention center. The 15-year-old told an investigator that the trio, quote, randomly attacked homeless people throughout Albuquerque over the past year, including more than 50 people since moving to the neighborhood several months ago, the complaint said. The bodies of two men were found on mattresses in a field across the street from the home where two of the boys lived, according to the complaint. A third man told police he managed to escape the late-night attack, and he recognized the teens despite the T-shirts covering their heads. The youngest boy said he was very angry over breaking up with his longtime girlfriend, and when he went with the older boys to mob the men, an investigator said in a sworn... Oh, when he went to, uh, to with the older boys to mob the men, an investigator said in a sworn statement. The boy explained that mob meant that they were going to attack them and rob them, the de detective said. He told police that they used several cinder blocks, a metal pole, and some sticks in the hour-long attack, the detective said, the 15-year-old admitted to using the cinder block as a weapon over 10 times. The 15-year-old said his brother, 16, scooped up some dirt from the ground and placed on the deceased male's faces and started to and stated, eat mud, bitch, the complaint said. That's cold-blooded. That is some cold-blooded shit. Fuck. The 16-year-old told the detective that afterwards he looked at himself in the mirror and saw the devil, according to the complaint. The oldest teen distanced himself from the most brutal details of the attack, accusing the other boys of using bricks, sticks, and a metal fence pole to hit the men while he acted as a lookout, the complaint said. The 18-year-old did admit to pushing down one of the subjects and picking up a stick near where the deceased subjects, subjects were located, it said. Now, despite the I saw the devil, no, you just looked at yourself and you felt remorse for what you did, because you have a grasp on reality, you fucking asshole cocksucker. And so now you're going to go to prison for a long fucking time. Hopefully life. This deserves life without parole. 50 or more vagrants attacked by these three assholes, these little shit bags, attacked in Albuquerque over the last year, in the last several months since they moved to the neighborhood. And now they've murdered two of them. Maybe they've murdered some more. This deserves life in prison without parole. This is a def these are defective humans. There's no fixing this. There's no go to classes, involuntary commit, nothing. These are just bad, defective people. These are the people you put in prison for life without parole. Life without parole. Oh, he's 15. Fucking yeah. Because at 15, you can be enough of an adult to murder people 
you're enough of an adult to go to jail for the rest of your fucking life because you're a gigantic piece of shit asshole cocksucker. Put them in jail. All of them. In jail for life. No no defense of, oh, I, I was trying to please send them. Even those broads. Put them, put them to, in prison for the rest of their lives. None of this bullshit. No, 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 no. You're just fucked up. That's, that's it. We need to draw a line in our society now where after a certain point, you don't get clemency. No, I talked about nonviolent drug crimes, which is easy and reasonable enough. But when you're 15, 16, and 18 year olds, and you've attacked more than 50 vagrants in the several months since moving to a neighborhood, and now you've murdered two of them because you fucking broke up with your girlfriend. That's it. No, nothing for you. No, no, no. No, no. Ooh, we need to try to fix this human. We need to, this just, fuck, take him out into the town square. Bam. Bullet to the fucking brain. Just rid ourselves of these people. No more. You don't get to reproduce. You don't get to reproduce. And if I if I was king of the world, the, I would, I, you know, you got to take out a good chunk of healthy tissue to make sure you get the tumor. So your immediate family also, town square, boom. De- defective humans, you cannot just try to fix. Three teenagers going into a field. First of all, how stupid... I don't want to tell people how to commit murder. But here's how to commit murder. Don't fucking do it in a field across from your fucking house. <laughs> Look, I, I've, I don't watch a lot of CSI, but I've seen some, I've seen some NYPD blue. I've seen some law and order. You don't do the crime near your house. Have you seen Scarface? These assholes probably have seen Scarface. Thought it was the greatest thing. It's a rags to riches story. Did you did you stay awake through the whole thing? Did you stay? <laughs> did you watch it all? Love when I hear people say that. It's a rags to riches story, man. Scarface, yeah, I love that. Rags to riches. Did you watch the whole thing? The whole thing. Not the where he's got the tiger and you're like, oh shit, a tiger? Not that. No, no, no. There's more after that. There's a good bit more of the movie left after he's got the tiger and the big gigantic bags of cash. The best part is, is they talk about Tony Montana where he's sitting, he's slouched down in his chair with his sleeves rolled up in that gigantic pile of coke. That's right before the fucking thing that makes it not a rags to riches story. But you remember Tony Montana and the, the whole thing, never get high on your own supply? In a similar vein, don't commit the murder in a field across from your fucking house. Commit a, don't do it. And if you've done, if you've beaten... For, at the time, it was 48 other vagrants. You've beaten them, and you've taken out your sadistic will upon them. Maybe you should quit while you're ahead. Apparently, 5-0 was not on you until you murdered two people. Now they're on you. You've, you're, if you're stupid enough, look, if you're defective enough to just think going around killing humans because you broke up with your girlfriend is acceptable, well... <clears throat> And you're too stupid to realize that you shouldn't commit the murders if you want to get away with them. You shouldn't commit the, the murders across from the field where you fucking live. I'm done with you. No more. No more. You know, you don't get nothing. Maybe not. Perhaps not execution because there may be times when even myself as king of the world would get it wrong. So perhaps not execution, but... You're just going to prison for the rest of your life. Solitary confinement. Here's, a, here's the bed sheets that you can fashion into a noose if you want. There you go. Put them in prison for the rest of their lives, but give them an out. Here are the bed sheets. These are not the priestess stress ones that'll break if you try to hang your body weight from it. No, you can fashion these into a usable noose and you can kill yourself. Here you go. Solitary confinement the rest of your life without parole. If you can do it, if you just want to live out your life in lockdown, okay. But I'll give you this way out. Kill yourself if you want. In, uh, <clears throat> in other um, I love religion news. <laughs> this, is from, uh, this is from Kama Press. A 10-year-old Afghan girl who was raped by a mullah in northern Afghanistan is at risk of an honor killing. According to reports, the family of the young rape victim is under the pressure by village elders who are insisting to kill the girl because, quote, she had brought shame to them, end quote. 
The girl was reportedly protected in a women's shelter in uh, Kunduz province, but was returned to her family later on Tuesday. According to an official statement, the rape was so brutal and had nearly died because treatment was, uh, was delayed. She had suffered a break in the wall between the vagina and rectum. In the meantime, the 45-year-old mullah has claimed that the girl had promised to marry him and rejected that she is 10 years old. The mullah was, has claimed that the girl was 17 years old, but the mother of, victim, mother of the victim has said she was only 10 years old. Hospital records indicate the child weighed just 40 pounds and had yet to start menstruating. That's all I got to say. This is, this is religion. Now, I know some people are going to say, well, you can say it's the fault of religion, but blah, 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 blah. There's no justice system, and there's no independent government. No, there's no secularism, and da, 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 da. And it's really the fault of a lack of secular oversight on religion or on a religious state. And I say, yeah, who's in control of that? The fucking religious people. It's the religious people who go around saying, yeah, fuck secularism. Give us the fucking the theism. Give it to us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A theistic state. That's what we want. We fucking want that. Secularism, get the fuck out of here. We want the 45-year-old mullah in the town to be able to rape the 10-year-old girl and break the wall between her vagina and rectum because Muhammad said it's okay. What the f- and these people who did it, no, you get nothing from me. You get no funding, you get nothing. You get no aid, nothing, nothing. Stay in, the, stay in the Stone Age until you kill yourselves. Leave the rest of the world alone. Leave the rest of the world alone. And to say that this isn't a religious problem, it's something else's problem, look at who controls that. The religious. You're just missing the forest for the trees. You're saying, well, it's... It's not the religious fault. It's the fault of the lack of government. Well, who gets to control whether there's a government election or whether there's a there's a secular oversight? The religious populace. People I talk about uh, <clears throat> in another story in Al Jazeera, gunshots fired at Al Jazeera Bureau in Gaza. Uh, Gaza. Gunshots have been fired into Al Jazeera's bureau in the Gaza Strip amid an intensified bombardment campaign on the Palestinian enclave. The shots caused panic among the civilians living in the same building, but no casualties have been reported in the incident on Tuesday morning. Quote, two very precise shots were fired into our building. Al Jazeera's Stephanie Decker, reporting from the bureau in Gaza, said, We are high up in the building, so we had a very strong vantage point over the area, but we have evacuated. The bureau is situated in a residential area of Gaza City. Our office building has uh, also has many residential apartments. People are leaving panicked. The, the attack came a day after Israeli Foreign Minister uh, Avigdor Lieberman was quoted by local media as saying his country will work to close down Al Jazeera in Israel. Al Jazeera, quote, has abandoned even the perception of being a reliable news organization and broadcast from Gaza into the world, anti-Israeli incitement, lies, and encouragement to the terrorists, Lieberman said. Al Jazeera has been covering the Israeli offensive in the Gaza Strip that started on July 8th. The foreign minister's comments were a direct threat against us and appear to have been taken as a green light for the targeting, targeting of our journalists in Gaza. We hold the Israeli authorities fully responsible. They have put the lives of journalists in danger. The network said in a statement, the death toll in Israeli's 14-day assault climbed to more than 607 Palestinians, according, including dozens of women and children. More than 3,700 3, others have been injured. On the Israeli side, 27 troops and two civilians have been killed. And it would, people get upset at me because, oh, wow, this is, you don't, and I say, this is a religious feud. And it's stupid because it incites you're using religion and the fight over religious sites as an excuse to start killing civilians and killing children and killing women and, and targeting now journalists. And it's all stemming from a, a fight over religious sites, fighting over Jerusalem, fighting over Bethlehem, fighting over the Wailing Wall and all this, all this stuff. And people say, no, you don't understand. It's way too common. It has nothing to do with religion. I say, bullshit. Yes, now it's about an enclave and an insurgency and that kind of stuff, but the entire reason, the root cause of the insurgency, the root cause of the enclave is fucking religion. They believe they have claims to these lands. It's a land dispute. Right, born from fucking religion. Well, that's like saying a gunshot wound is just a bleeding problem. 
Well, yeah, I got shot by that 45. It's just, I've got a problem with hemorrhaging blood right now. That's all. It's just a hemorrhaging blood problem. I say, yes, you also have a gigantic fucking slug inside of you. Oh, no, it's just, I'm just bleeding. That's all. Oh, the thing hit my liver. I just got liver damage. No, you got shot. (laughs) The shot caused the liver damage. Yes. And you may be technically true, technically correct in saying, oh, well, yes, I, this person is suffering from liver damage, but the liver, you're fucking missing, you're leaving out the part where you got shot with a 45. And I'm steering down the barrel of a 45, 45. It's like saying a rapist is good with women. You know, that guy gets a lot of pussy. You're ignoring the rape. These are religious problems. The problem of a lack of secular oversight in religious states, overly religious states, in which a 45-year-old mullah is raping a fucking 10-year-old, yes, that is the problem. That there isn't a secular side to oversee all of this stuff. There isn't a a secular judiciary. That's the fault of the religious! (laughs) Now, it's not that Islam itself, it's not that the religion is inherently evil, it's just that religion gives people the keys to go around and start doing crazy shit because God and Muhammad or whatever the fuck says it's okay. How many people has religion killed? Ah, the fucking Crusades, bro. Remember that? I don't. I wasn't there. But I've heard about it. Apparently, it was pretty bad. Done Done under the guise of religion. Religion is a, is a bad mark on our society. <laughs> It provides comfort. It provided comfort for a while when we couldn't explain things that we saw. It, it, initially, it even provided explanations for things that we could not explain because we, not had, we had not developed proper science or scientific methods yet. And so in lieu of that, we could say, well, the stars move because wheels within wheels. Or we could also say the stars move or the, the moon and the sun move because they're gods chasing each other around our planet. And for early religion provided explanation for that which we cannot explain. And then it moved into, well, now it's a way to provide comfort. Now we've discovered this thing called value and money and all these things. Oh, shit, now, I have my, now, now my consciousness has value, but I, I see other consciousness ending all the time. Oh, my God, that's scary. Oh, what if religion said that, oh, it never ends. It's just really, really good. It's really, really cool. It's all the time. Never-ending party. doesn't stop. Sweet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Now... Religion has become a way for perverts in Afghanistan to rape 10-year-olds. For perverts all throughout America to rape altar boys. Because, oh, my religion makes me do crazy shit and now I have some weird sexual deficiency. Some weird deficiency in my sexual drives. And I think it's okay to rape a 10-year-old. Or I think it's okay to rape an altar boy. And, and... That, is, that thought is reinforced by the Vatican not turning me over to, bu- to police, but shuffling me around and just, make, just pretending like it didn't happen. It's also the, the, the rape of the 10-year-old is reinforced because there's no secular oversight and people are going to be pissed off that I say on this show, well, fuck them and fuck that, go in and get them or just leave them alone, no aid, no nothing, and let them all die and kill each other off. Because, oh, coexist, man. That's just a different... No, fuck that. That's backwards, archaic, stupid bullshit. It should be banned. Banned. No more religion. No. What do you practice? I I believe in Jesus Christ. No more. What do you believe in? I believe in Muhammad. I practice Islam. No more for you. What do you believe? Oh, I believe in whatever the hell it is Jewish people believe in. Uh Uh-uh. No more of that. Every single one of you has done stupid, archaic backwards bullshit in the last day, in the last 24 hours there's been a priest raping a boy. In the last 24 hours there's been a a, a mullah raping a 10 year old girl in the last 10 hours there have been civilians murdered by Israelis or, or civilian Israeli civilians murdered by Palestinians because of a religious view that goes back centuries or because of a dispute over land that has religious meaning that goes back centuries to describe it better, I believe. All of you, all of you are doing crazy shit under the flag of your religion. No fucking more. Done. No more of it. All right, let's bring it up. 
Another great edition of The Lefty Show. I thank you all for joining. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I had a great time putting on the show for you. Thank you all for watching, liking, favoriting, subscribing on YouTube. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX is where you can go to listen to the show in its YouTube formation. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX. Uh, thank you to everybody that's been following me on Twitter. You want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest Lefty Show news, you can do so. Twitter.com slash Lefty643. Thank you to everybody that's been helping the show grow by sharing it with your friends, family, and coworkers. And thank you to everybody that will take this show, share it. You can subscribe to the RSS feed, go to leftyshow.podbean.com, or go to your favorite Android podcasting app of choice, search The Lefty Show. Or if you want to really go and help us out, you really want to help us climb the charts, go to the iTunes store, search The Lefty Show, and be sure to subscribe to the feed there. Download all the episodes at your leisure. Thank you to everybody that's been donating at iRaising.com forward slash 643 Productions, helping the show stay afloat. Anyway, guys, that's my time. I got to get out of here. Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you next time. I'm out. Bye. I'm flowing straight from the survival scroll.